Boris Johnson is under fire for giving a wealthy Russian a seat in Britain's House of Lords against the advice of the security services. Evgeny Lebedev is the son of Alexander Lebedev, a former KGB agent turned billionaire oligarch. Lebedev Sr. got rich as owner of Russia's National Reserve Bank, which held big stakes in Gazprom, the state oil giant, Aeroflot, the Russian airline, and a military jet manufacturer. In 2009, Alexander bought the Evening Standard and the Independent before returning to Russia and handing over control to his son, Evgeny. It was as a de facto owner of the Evening Standard that Evgeny developed a close relationship with Boris Johnson, then London Mayor. The Sunday Times have revealed it was a relationship that flourished despite serious concerns from the security service. For example, they report that in 2013, the head of MI6 was so concerned about Lebedev seeking to gain influence in Britain that he refused to meet him for lunch. The paper reports that meetings between MI6 bosses and newspaper editors and proprietors are reasonably common. They give a background briefing to these guys. Potentially a problematic relationship, but a normal one. The MI6 boss decided he wasn't going to do that in this situation because of this guy's sort of connections to, or potential connections to the Kremlin. The Sunday Times also revealed a controversy caused in Whitehall when Boris Johnson nominated Lebedev for a peerage. Due to security concerns, Britain's security services opposed the move, but were overruled by Johnson. They write, according to a source, Johnson was demanding that the security service provide a specific reason, in other words, a smoking gun, demonstrating why his good friend Lebedev was not a suitable figure to sit in the Lords. Civil servants were stunned by this move. They said it was unprecedented for a prime minister to question such an assessment and that the system of vetting only worked if politicians heeded the advice of the security services. They also said Johnson's response mistook the nature of such intelligence, which is based on the risk a person might pose more than one past deed or event. In any case, the fundamental assessment did not change, but if intelligence officials are thought to have told Johnson there was not one specific reason to block him, that was enough for Johnson to renominate Lebedev, telling Holax, that was someone in the, the House of Lords Commission, that the previous issue had been resolved. Now, I'm going to be controversial here. I think. The relationship between Boris Johnson and Lebedev is, is incredibly unsavory. But I'm not sure that quote I just read to you and this story involving MI6 actually makes Boris Johnson look that bad. And the reason I'm going to say this is because I value consistency. I think consistency is, is important in politics. And I can bet that for good reason, if Jeremy Corbyn was prime minister, you know, and Seamus Milne was his director of strategy, then if they wanted to put someone in the House of Lords, and MI6 said, oh, no, no, we've got concerns about this particular person, they would be asking for evidence, right? I, I don't think that asking your security services for evidence of, of what they're basing their advice on is, is that bad a thing. You know, I, I don't think he comes across that badly in that particular part of the story, which again is, is one of the parts that sort of liberals, you know, especially Remainers, are getting very het up about because these are people who you have a lot of faith in the MI6, and they have a lot of, you know, concern that the the national interest of this country could be being usurped by outsiders, by the Russians, who are sort of the big, obviously, I think the Russians are the bogeyman when it comes to the war in Ukraine. I don't necessarily think they are when it comes to Trump, when it comes to Brexit, etc. But there is a culture among liberals and centrists where they say like, oh, it's the, it's the, the FBI, the MI6, who we have to really value and defend against these nefarious outsiders and populists, I don't really buy into that narrative. I will go on to say what narrative I do buy into. First of all, though, Michael Gove was asked on Sky whether Boris Johnson has, at the very least, behaved foolishly in getting so close to Lebedev. Well, I don't think so. Um, uh, I've met um, Lord Lebedev, as the Prime Minister has. Um, at no point did anyone ever say to me that it would be inappropriate uh, to meet him and to um, to talk to him, and so I think none of those concerns were passed on. Even though in 2013, uh, it, the Sunday Times believes uh, that they were passed on to people at least around Boris Johnson. Nobody has ever said to me, and right. um, uh, uh, I've met Mr. Le Mr. Lord Lebedev, as he now is, in public, um, and nobody has ever suggested to me that that was wrong. There's something else as well I'd want to say. So you're happy um, to call him Lord Lebedev then? Yes. Well, uh, the, the, one of the other things I should say is that. Um, uh, Lord Lebedev has been clear through the pages of the Evening Standard, the newspaper of which he is proprietor, that he wholeheartedly disapproves of this conflict. 
Uh, he's been critical of Vladimir Putin's actions. I think one of the things that Vladimir Putin would like us to do is to uh, have a, uh, an approach in the UK where we said that everyone of Russian ancestry um, was somehow... No, that's or, not, or that's not what we're saying, is it? This is, no, no, this no, is somebody, I, I think, this is somebody who the security services have intervened over the, the peerage. The head of MI6 refused to meet. Oh, quite. And, this is uh, not just some like normal Russian person who lives on your street, is it? Uh, uh, no, uh, but it's also the case that, uh, again, um, I think it's um, appropriate to recognise that what um, uh, Putin wants to do is, is to uh, divide us in this way. Uh, again, the, the Sunday Times are reporting things today. They're news to me. Um, but of course, I take account fully of the integrity of their reporting. Some of what Michael Gove said there, I think, is is reasonable. Lebedev has spoken out against the war. He's not egging on the war in Ukraine. But the real problem here for me, as I say, and what, what should probably have been pushed more by that host, why is it so easy to get a seat at the table of Britain's establishment so long as you have mountains of cash, whichever country you're from? From the Sunday Times piece, it does make it all look quite easy, if you can afford it. They write that from 2012, Johnson started travelling to Palazzo Terranova, the Lebedev's villa nestling in the hills of Umbria, and Castello di Santa Eurasia, their nearby castle, often flying commercially or on private jets paid for by the Russian. According to previous guests, such parties are not easily forgotten. Vodka and caviar are plentiful. Dinner is followed by music and dancing. Stephen Fry, Tony Blair, and yes... Again, Peter Mandelson have been seen at some event. They follow a similar pattern. Pre-dinner drinks would start quite late, around 9pm, said one frequent attendee. Dinner is 10pm, late by our standards. There is music and dancing afterwards. We're talking Elton John and the Pet Shop Boys, not clubbing. That's a shame, I like the Pet Shop Boys. There was very fine alcohol. There was vodka if you want it. The wine was very good. Evgeny was a very generous host. His father was often there. It was a mix of politicians and celebrities, lots of actors. Johnson became so close to Lebedev that he visited the castle in Perugia every October for five successive years from 2012 to 2016. He would sometimes even bring his wife. All Johnson's expenses were covered by Lebedev, including his transport to and from the airport. Twice Johnson used the chauffeur-driven vehicle of the Evening Standards, then editor Sarah Sands. Previously undisclosed documents show he accepted £7,150 worth of flights, cars and accommodation from Lebedev between 2013 and 2015, justifying them in hand-signed expensive returns as networking events. Networking events is not good... The, the, well, at this point in time, the mayor of London and then the foreign secretary going for networking events. That's the kind of thing that should be explained. Who are you networking with and why? Something I've just noticed in that that didn't struck me before. He would sometimes even bring his wife. Now, I, would kind of, I wouldn't think that was worth mentioning. I would normally think that to this kind of social occasion, this party, you would bring your wife. But this is obviously something of note when it comes to Boris Johnson. Maybe he often preferred to travel alone for reasons I won't discuss. As I say, I don't really care where oligarchs come from. My issue here, though, is, is if they are funding the lavish holidays of the London mayor while owning London's biggest paper, I think we have a conflict of interest here. And Boris Johnson going on to give Lebedev a peerage only seems to confirm that. Does Lebedev being the son of a KGB agent also, do, does that make this more serious than it otherwise would be? Potentially, the most concrete allegation in the Sunday Times is that according to Italian intelligence reports, Lebedev Sr. has been involved in attempts by Gazprom and its largest shareholder, the Kremlin, to influence the energy politics of foreign governments. But a newspaper-owning oligarch whining and dining politicians and then demanding they change their energy, energy policies doesn't strike me as a particularly Russian thing to do. Indeed, it might seem ironic that this story about Johnson and Lebedev is in a newspaper owned by the ultimate media baron, Rupert Murdoch. Now, I wonder if these journalists would have been allowed to publish a similar story about the oligarch who runs their newspapers. Interestingly, on that topic, both The Independent and The Evening Standard did write up stories about their owners. That's about Lebedev, the story in The Independent. MI6 warned PM about Russian oligarch friend Evgeny Lebedev. And we've got another story in The Evening Standard. MI6 warned PM about Russian oligarch friend Evgeny Lebedev two years ago. Um, but before you celebrate press freedom and how oligarchs owning our newspapers doesn't stop them reporting on issues that might affect those oligarchs, 
both of those articles were taken down. So the standard would take that article down and replace it with this statement from the proprietor in response to media speculation. You could have made that statement without deleting the initial story, by the way. Just a suggestion. The independent article would also be deleted. Clicking on the original link takes you to this. Sorry, we can't find that page. The address could have been entered incorrectly or the page could have gone missing because our owner, our billionaire Russian oligarch owner, didn't like that we were writing negative stories about him. So sorry, that's gone into the, the effort that is now ancient history. You cannot read about this story on the independent website. Just as I imagine you can't read particularly critical stories about Rupert Murdoch in the Sunday Times or The Sun. This, this is the nature of Britain's free press. This is what we celebrate when we say, ah, oh, the difference between us and Russia. We have a free press. We can say what we want. Yes. As I say, as I've said already on this show, we do have a lot more freedom of speech than they have in Russia. But if we really had a commitment to the democratic control of information, to being able to write whatever you want about whoever you want, then potentially we shouldn't have all of our biggest media outlets owned by oligarchs with some very specific vested interests, as we've seen here. Evgeny Lebedev doesn't surprise me that his father would be lobbying on behalf of Gazprom because, as we said, he, 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 he managed to take over the bank that has huge shares in it. This isn't necessarily a conspiracy. This is just people looking out for their interests. They recognize that it's very good value to take Boris Johnson out to these fancy hotels and castles because there's going to be an economic return for them. That's, and that's why I don't really like the sort of the narrative that this is all about you know, treason, essentially. This is about the Russians subverting our democracy. No, this is about our democracy being pretty corrupt from the outset. And it is interesting, because no one says about Rupert Murdoch, oh, this is Australians corrupting our democracy. No, this is just Rupert Murdoch, uh, a, a, a random rich guy with reactionary politics. And I think that is the case in so many of these situations. The issue isn't where they're from. The issue is that they can buy access to the people at the top of our politics. And there is still not enough scrutiny on that. And, and, and partly one of the reasons there isn't enough scrutiny on that is because we see this as exceptional. Michael Gove can say, oh, we shouldn't, we shouldn't uh, be demonizing Russians because that's what Putin wants. I mean, the question after that should be, well, wherever the person is from, should the prime minister, or his foreign secretary at the time, be going every year to a castle owned by this guy who, because of his wealth, clearly has vested interests that he would like the government to act on? Is this, is this appropriate? Is it appropriate to take all of this hospitality Fancy wine, fancy food, and just put it in your expenses as networking. Is that appropriate? I don't think it's appropriate. You can make up your own mind. That doesn't seem like the sign of a healthy democracy to me. Mm -hmm.